The best way to play a drum rack live is with an external MIDI controller. In this case, I'm using a special drum pad controller from Akai called an MPD32. I like this one because it's built like a tank. It's USB bus powered and it's natively supported by live with no drivers required. And the drum pads are all authentic MPC style pads. Also, the drum pad's 4x4 pad matrix matches exactly with the drum pad layout in our drum rack, making it really easy to visually compare between the two in a live show. First, let's get the controller set up properly. To activate a MIDI controller, you need to go to your Preferences area. Let's cruise up to our Live menu and drop down, selecting Preferences. In here, there's a variety of tabs on the left you can choose from. The one we need is MIDI Sync. In the MIDI Sync tab, you'll see an area called Ports. This is where the MPD32 shows up, and we need to make sure everything's set correctly. You'll see under Input, it says Akai MPD32. It's got several other ports listed, but we're not going to mess with these at all. We only need to use the Input Akai MPD32. You need to make sure both the Track and Remote buttons are lit up yellow. The Track button ensures that the drum pads will be sending MIDI note information in, which is required to play our drum sounds. The remote area will make sure that the faders, knobs, and buttons of the MIDI controller are able to be MIDI mapped to various parameters in live, which is also very useful. This controller, as you can see, has a lot of different faders and knobs on it. We want to make sure we're able to use them. Once this is set up, you want to make sure in the upper right hand corner of live that it's receiving MIDI information. You can tell it's receiving information from the controller when it lights up yellow. Check it out now as I play a couple of notes or move a fader. You can see the little yellow light is now lighting up. So we know now that our MIDI controller is working correctly with live. Our next step is to tell our drum rack to properly receive information from our MPD32. We do that by bouncing over to the MIDI track that contains our drum rack, and we can do this one of two ways. You'll recall from our last video with the computer's MIDI keyboard that one way to do this is to set the monitor to in. Let's test this out. You can tell, first of all, we're producing a sound, which is great. You can also see incoming MIDI information right here and right here on the individual layers and sounds. The great thing about this drum pad controller is the pads are velocity sensitive. And because we have our simplers in our drum rack set up with the velocity to volume parameter activated, set right here at 100%. What this means is that whenever I hit a note on the MPD32, different velocities will create different volumes. A lot of drummers might like this for live performance. However, in a lot of cases, especially with electronic music, you want your percussion to be playing at its maximum volume with every hit and being very consistent. This MIDI controller has a special feature called Full Level, which allows you to do that. By pressing this button, it'll ensure that every time one of the drum pads is hit, it'll output a full 127 velocity MIDI note. Pretty much any drum pad style controller should have a feature like this. The other way to set the drum rack to receive MIDI information from the MPD32 is to leave monitor to auto, but to select record enable. This would be appropriate if you plan on recording the MIDI information coming from the MPD32. Testing it out, we're definitely receiving MIDI information. So now you can see that the four bottom pads are mapped perfectly to the four bottom pads on the MPD32. We have a kick, we have a snare, we have a closed hi-hat, and an open hi-hat. And we can play each one of them freely. So in this video, we covered how to set up an external MIDI controller within Live's preferences area and how to set the MIDI track that our drum rack is on to properly receive incoming MIDI information from our controller. But we're left with a possible challenge, playing in the live environment. Say you're playing alongside warped audio material with your drum rack. I'm going to show you in our next video a technique where you can use a special type of MIDI clip in conjunction with the MPD32 to play your percussion samples perfectly on time, every time. Stay tuned.